I have notes as well. Well, today I'm going to talk about how I'm going to mold finance and something called behavioral finance to tell you why people make bad decisions with their finances, don't make decisions with their finances, and I'll try to do it in under five minutes. First off, when I say investor in action, it could be a cause of many different things. For instance, fear. I'm letting these things load very slow. Bad decisions. Five minutes. It could be due to fear, like I said, is a great example. But at the same time, what I'm going to talk about tonight is more subconscious, things that we don't know we're doing, to try to give you some help in figuring big things out. When I'm speaking about inaction, I don't mean in action. Action means things that are synonymous with deferral, idleness, passivity, stasis, all those words you don't want on your tombstone. In uh, behavioral finance, theoretically, we're all determined to be rational profit seekers, meaning that we tend to make good decisions with our money. You probably will often not think that way because Rick was killing me earlier, but that's all right. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to go over is the things that make us irrational, starting with the first one, which is called anchoring. We've all heard the statement probably that two months' salary is what you're supposed to use on a diamond ring. All the smart guys in the room know it's at least four months' salary, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> And it goes into the things that we anchor on a specific subject, and we get stuck with that subject when we make decisions. That's called anchoring. Looking at mental accounting is the idea we make mental buckets in our head of where our money's supposed to be. You have assets and liabilities, and very little times so people actually cross them over. One time someone came in and said, I have $50,000 in savings, I have $45,000 in credit card debt, what should I do? You pay the debt off. Well, then I won't have any savings. They didn't have any savings in the first place. But there it is. Confirmation and hindsight bias is, no offense, is when people think about when I want to do something in my opinion set, I used to find information that makes me reinforce what I was thinking. They disregard and don't really think about the other things. And hindsight bias is the told you so. After something happens, they say, well, I knew that was going to happen. The adverse fallacy is flipping a coin is always 50-50. People think after I flip it once, the next time, if it's heads the first, it's got to be tails the next time. That's the adverse fallacy. So don't determine uh, future events on past experience. Herd mentality is don't be a lemming. Just because they said it in the magazine or said it on the radio, 11:50, shouldn't mean you should do it. <laughs> don't jump off the cliff. The old don't jump off the bridge of your friend does principle. Confidence. Confidence is a wonderful thing. Overconfidence is very deadly. They, asked, they, they did this in a room of first-year associates at a Wall Street firm. Who thought they were above average? 80% of the people raised their hands. How can 80% of the people be above average? Overconfidence. Overreaction. You get new information and you freak out. You know? Reese's debt's going to hell. It means everything else is going to follow. But you can see this guy, you know, heard something in the shower and was having a cookie. And I like this stuff. <laughs> Prospect theory is, I have a checking account with a bunch of money in it. Why should I put it in a savings account or earning 0.25%? Or I'll just stuff on my mattress. Something's better than nothing. No overtime, I'd rather not work than work overtime. Analysis paralysis, don't get stuck overthinking things. If you get stuck overthinking things that a lot of people do, you'll never make a decision. Sometimes rushing a decision is a very, very bad idea. Hence, when you go to the mall with a girl and she's shopping for shoes, never rush that decision. It's a her decision, leave it alone. But sometimes rushing a decision is a very good idea. Maybe just take a step back and you know what? I should probably already know this. So let's, uh, there we go. Uh, chop that up pretty good, but you can see that remember it or not remember it. Probably a good idea to make that one quick and you should remember it. So, some you should rush through, some you shouldn't. My point today is that everything in our environment affects our decisions. You can do it. Relax. Don't overanalyze it. You can do it. Think about Conscious Cat. Conscious Cat once said that murder is not a very good way for career events. <laughs> and finally, I leave you with this. When you go on Google and you type in the crazy things, which you probably see all the time, you're always amazing about how many returns come back and how many people have searched for it. I always like doing this. If 50 million plus people search for it, doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea. <laughs> Peace and love. Peace and love.